I like to make sure I start with things square, which I usually most of my cuttings are. This is a 10 ounce duck cloth. Okay, I got 23 inches there. Twenty-six and a half wide on that, so we'll go thirteen and a quarter here for a center reference. When I'm finishing these, these, front, these edges off, I have to be very careful and avoid hitting either a tack head or those, those strap springs there. The staples will curl back and very likely get you in the finger. Got one there. Chair seats ready to stuff. Okay, I'll start the stuffing process for the seat by pulling off two or three wing spans of string here. It's best to have plenty. This is some uh, Italian hemp, just like the spring tying cord. Well, it's just more of a lighter string. I'm running this through a beeswax ball. It, it makes the string easier to work with and knots tend to stay in place better and it helps take a lot of that memory and kinking out of the string too. That's one of the most beneficial things. I usually start with the ends and then pull it through two or three times and that's adequate. I'm using a five inch curved needle with a round point. They make different styles of points uh, in a duck cloth or something. Works fine. Some of them have uh, what they call a, a bayonet point and it's like a three faceted tip on it, but this will work fine. I use this, my hand, for placing the stuffing, so about halfway through I'm going to pull up some fabric here. Draw our string through. This knot is handy. I use it all the time. It's nicknamed the upholsterer's knot, but from the bottom side I'm taking a pinch on the string and just go over the top and all the way around and back through the eye. Pull that up and locks into place. I'm going to start here and about every hand's width, right in the middle here, I'm going to pull up about an inch of duck cloth. leave quite a bit of, of uh, excess string pulled back to the side and we're going to go across this seat. Might as well go in threes it looks like. Go to the center. And pull that down out of the way. Looks like about one right in here. come into the side here and we'll just drop this off and 
start putting our stuffing in place. This product is called wood wool or excelsior. Traditionally our chair seat would have been stuffed with a flax straw and uh, it's just anymore it's a product we, we can't get anymore. So um, what I need to do is get rid of a lot of the sawdust and shaky material in there. I've got some hand soap and water mixed together. You can use glycerin like people who do chair caning, seat caning. Glycerin slows down the drying of the, the evaporation of the, the water, but I've found that the soapy water adds a nice little fresh scent and uh, works just as well. As I moisten this bale section, it slowly gets more pliable and it's just a matter of working with it until it gets easy to, to separate. Pull that off to the side. This looks like a pretty dirty chunk right here. And I've found that I think I waste as much of this as I do actually use. What I'm trying to do is separate and just get made basically the fiber material. Okay, we need to keep this wood wool moistened as we work with it. Just atom, use the atomizer bottle and work with it a little bit. You can eventually get it softened up and very pliable to work with. Okay, I'm going to start stuffing the seat back in this corner. Working against my hand, I'm just going to start piling this in here, separating these fibers out as I go. Sometimes you can just pull on the, the wad and it just feathers out. That's a place I missed. I'm going to build this up along the outside edge about the, the four-finger depth. As the seat crowns, I'm going to reduce that to about a three-finger depth. Kind of level the, level the seat. And make sure I get around to the back side of that post there. And there again, I'm going to go about four fingers deep. The seat's 18 inches deep, so I'm going to try and get this in two rows. It's kind of risky business when you, when you separate in the center of the seat because sometimes if you don't get consistent fill, you'll end up with a little shallow, shallow ridge through there. I'm going to keep moistening the wood wool. When this is softened this way, it's pretty easy to, to sculpt it into a smooth, smooth shape. As I get this first section filled, I'll check my depth at three fingers. Then I'll pull this loop back and it'll hold everything in place. Okay, that looks like we can move on to the next section.
As I'm pulling these two sections together, I take this tool, the regulator, and I scratch these two, two bales together and work with them. Just kind of scratch and pick in there. We'll come back and do some more as we go. You need to make sure you get these uh, evened up together. It will leave kind of a fold line soft spot through the center. I'll take the regulator and work some of these ends here, smooth up any shallow places, bring them up. Sometimes this area is dried out, you might want to mist it a little bit and make them pull together easier. I like to get the Excelsior pulled down into shape smooth without having to add any, any more to it. but. If you get a, a thin area, you can pick up some of your shake and, and work around with it. But this one seems to be coming out pretty smooth. We're gonna drop on one, maybe two layers of cotton batting. It's a nice measurement, 27, that's the standard width of the bale, so looks like I'll go 27 by maybe 30 inches. Some of these roll-ins get a little lumpy and you have to be careful about using them because the lumps do come through in the final product. Yep, 28 by 30 did I say, 29-ish. tend to run into a lot of waste with cotton. It's easier to work it into place and 